Welcome. Welcome to the Radio Tunes Podcast, guys. How's it going? It's good. It's going good. Hey, we have a special guest on today. Uh, Kevin. Our friend Kevin. He's uh, back. Yeah. He's back for oh. more. If you're a fan of the podcast, you've uh, probably heard him on here before. Um, but we wanted to uh, give Kevin a little introduction, just so people know who he is, what to expect, that kind of stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, you want to introduce yourself, Kevin? Yeah, I'm Kevin Toft. Um, I've, uh, I'm an artist. I've been an, uh, pretty much my entire life. I haven't had to do much else, so I've been <laughs> pretty, pretty lucky that way. A couple but, of artists uh, here, then. Yep. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of both of you guys art-wise, too. I don't oh, wow, you, but, thanks. Well, I've tried to hire Ernie several times, but... I, <laughs> you I keep, keep leaving. I keep having to leave <laughs> yeah. before he gets there, but... Yeah, so, um, yeah, I've been doing graphics since, like, before the invention of Photoshop, which... Wow. That was... Talk about pushing pixels, guys. That was quite a task back in the day. You kids with your Photoshop, you have no idea. <laughs> we started with the GIMP, and then we moved into Photoshop. Maybe a little MS Paint. <laughs> well, well, sure, you know, before you get your first copy of Photoshop, sure. well, that's good. But still, MS Paint had, has had and has more tools than we had in this program called Pictor. Yeah. Which was uh, That archaic, is before my time. Archaic. Oh, yeah. my gosh. And you uh, you did work in video games for... I, yep, I worked in the video game industry. I've, I've even worked on a little film stuff and theater and, and anywhere there's creative going on. Mm-hmm. I've been involved in something you know uh to do with it just that's cool man so it's almost like a jack of all trades as far as uh yeah yeah i'm just flexible so yeah okay we're getting we're getting (laughs) we're getting way too so yeah (laughs) we're here to talk today about the uh most controversial movie of 2017 which is uh the last jedi uh it really seems like the opinion on this one's split right down the middle it's Uh, it's the most polarizing thing i've ever seen (laughs) happen and I, in you know, Wars or ever just any any movie ever that i, I mean I, I, usually you know somebody go go to see a movie and some people are like oh it was all right or this this one is like pure fire and hate right or i loved it, it was great yeah. yeah there seems to be no middle road um unless steven you're going to tell me your middle of the road. no <laughs> i uh i thought it was pretty good um i i i think i speak for all of us when i say it. i think it was pretty good yeah i um, enjoyed it I enjoyed but it but uh, but that that's the main thing is I enjoyed it. I mean I'm not super into like the whole like continuity of it all. Like I don't care so much about how it extends into other stuff or anything. I'm just there for whatever is, they that's can great. fit. Exactly. So it, 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 from my point of view, I was like, I was, it was entertaining. What am I supposed to say? You know, like yeah, it, it's uh, not just Star Wars, but there's been a lot of films. I've had to tell people don't take anything into the theater with you. There's a lot of times that people go to see a movie that comes from a book, a something. And uh-huh. they go in there with preconceived notions of what that movie has to do. And when the directors don't produce what the people wanted, then they, ha- they have this visceral reaction. I, th- I think that's true for a lot of movies. It, ha- it happened with me on Aliens 3. Because, oh my gosh. Well, okay, well, okay, all right, well, back up here. Now, okay, it, we had two, which was Aliens, which was awesome, right? Alien and Aliens. Yeah, yeah. which right. was awesome. Everybody loved that. And so then I was super psyched about that storyline. I went to the comic book store and I started reading Earth Wars. And I was oh, like, that's a oh, idea. man, that was so badass, those covers and everything. And I thought, Aliens 3 is coming out. Oh, great, they have the script right here. Uh-huh. Okay, like, this should be a oh, no-brainer. Okay. And then when that movie came out, we were all sitting there going, what? <laughs> uh, oh no! They huh? Yeah. You know, and then somebody said, "Oh yeah, go watch the end credits of Aliens, all the way to the very, very last title." You guys done that? No. Oh, this is awesome! If you watch the tail, the all the way to the end credits of Aliens, uh-huh. the as the last word scrolls up, you hear a face hugger. <laughs> it's supposed to be the face hugger that that got on the sh- uh, oh my god yes i know wow. hey, so how about dumb. that i we were all going mm. they were doing it they were doing it before marvel was doing it so that, well, might, that, t- that might be what people are thinking with star wars too because there is some like extended universe stuff that people really enjoy sure and they don't like that is that some of it isn't being represented in movies and stuff like that but plus know? going back to going back to tfa they they put the list out. Disney and Lucasfilm put the the list out of saying that this is canon. canon. And this is not. It's, yeah, it's out there I on see. the internet. There's no, by this time, by this point, 
people shouldn't be going, oh shucks, they didn't do that. It, right. It's if they were going to start, if they were going to start whining, they should have done start it all the way it. back on. Which PSA. they did. They a lot of people did. So there is that. But I think when it comes to this movie and, and what they're trying to do here, I think I think a lot of problems stem from the fact that the first person who directed it and now the second person directed it they have very different like really 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 different ideas of what star wars is supposed to be what did this one go through that whole like process of like we lost a director or was no. That... no 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 but no, the that's... director is also the writer that's the han solo movie. yeah okay yeah but that's the thing is like he inherited the, the director inherited these things from the first movie right, right. but he's also writing it so he, and carrie that's what, she got to help yes yeah, she got to help yeah. but a lot of the problems stem from the fact that he is those ideas that came from the last one, mm-hmm. he had to go through and be like, okay, we're going to kill this. Uh, we're going to kill this. So he had to do a little work to right. fix the problems of the first, or not fix the problems of, but in his own version of Star Wars, right. he wanted to make sure this is not going to be right. this, this is not going to be this. I see. A yeah. prime example is the whole thing with uh, Ray's lineage. Mm-hmm. In the first one, it was very heavily thought that she was going to be Ben Kenobi's mm. kid, right? Uh, and so they had to do the whole sequence of no she isn't. Which which right right off the bat, okay. I, I'm going to I'm going to point out something that I don't like about the movie, but um I I'll, I'll refer you guys to my Stranger Things 2 podcast where <laughs> there's a lot of shit I didn't like, but that doesn't mean I didn't like it yeah. as, as a whole. Yeah, yeah. I just I just tend to nitpick things cuz that's my nature. Um but what were you just saying right now? Just remind me real fast. About it's Kenobi, Kenobi, the Kenobi right, right. lineage. Um, I didn't like that the Force Awakens, like basically hinged so much on like, oh, the next one's gonna do all this. So just like, right, stay in suspense this whole time, and and we'll fill it in later. And like, who said that? No, well, like say I, I said, oh. a lot of people were just like, "Oh, I'm well, excited." That's like preconceived. Yeah, like yes. that whole like I'm excited for the next one okay. now because right. they've set up all this stuff, and and to me that's kind of like, well, why don't you just make this one good by itself without having to like, Refer you know what back. I'm trying to say? Like, pe- right? I can answer this Kenobi thing. Okay, the I don't want to put you guys in a weird space here, but anybody that was thinking that that lineage might go to Kenobi. I would say that you would have, again, here we go, back to the Clone Wars. He had a romantic interest with uh, Duchess Satine of uh, of Mandalore. I've okay. never, never heard of this. Thing. Right, <laughs> I know. But Kenobi stuck to the rules of the Jedi Order. And I sure. think they used that as a contrast to Anakin, who was definitely in a relationship right. uh, all the way. Sure. Uh, so, uh, but they did hint at it. And I don't know what people were thinking that it could be Kenobi's if they actually had tied it to Duchess Satine or who they thought the female was. Uh-huh. But the timing is all wrong because uh, Ray is apparently like a teenager. Right. Exactly. No, no, no. And I think I, when I, well, would Kenobi have done this and had a kid that could still be no, a teenager? I, it's like true, come yeah. on. What folks. I what I mean is not that she was directly born from Kenobi. What that I Kenobi mean is had that a kid from someone else who had no, 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 in Kenobi's family. Because uh, I, family. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is like people There's were that thinking character development again. Exactly, yeah. where it's like they think maybe at some point, maybe they figure out that you know Kenobi had an extended family and blah 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 and this and that. I'm she, not. I'm totally not saying that she was made from Kenobi. Right. Okay. Yeah. So here, but here's the bottom line on that: is anything that's good has to evolve. Right. Um. You know, and people out there, we're gonna. Have, I, I'll use this as an example. There's people out there gonna be fans of this and that aren't, but. U2 is not the band they were on the War album. That band has, if you listen to War and then listen to their latest album, and any album in between, they have grown. Sure. They have grown. Star Wars has to grow. We can't get, we can't keep having a nostalgia trip of 4, 5, and 6 right. every time they launch a movie. I want this universe to grow. Yeah. And when you get this many movies in the in the line, you ha- there has to be th- some growth away from center. Which I think is this is this is what I was saying in the very beginning. You know how the first one is Force Awakens. Ooh, there's there's Han, there's Chewie, there's like all these you know cameos right. and all this stuff. And then this one is themed very very heavily in let go of all your preconceptions about what we think Star Wars is. Some people don't like that. Some I did, people I, want the same you, old Star Wars. I did and like I think how that's much what's I did. I did like how much Luke was in the movie. That I was very glad right. to see that because right. that. that <laughs> 
the whole time I was watching The Force Awakens, I was like, finally, Luke's here. And then it ends, and I was kind of like... Damn it, Luke's got... Like, <laughs> you know, it, Mark had the same issue you did. Yeah, it's, it's weird, too, because like it's not that I didn't like Han Solo in that movie, but just knowing that Harrison Ford is kind of like, I don't want to do this character anymore, and like... He, oh, he definitely wanted to do it. He, did he? he? Yeah, in, in interviews that I saw. And no, he means that, he definitely wanted to be killed off in that movie. Well, but, no, he well, wanted to be... He actually... From what I, the, one of the interviews I saw, he he was kind of now wishing he had it. Back in the old days, back in uh, New Hope, he was telling. There's interviews where he was telling George, "Hey, you got you can't have everybody make it. You got to kill one of us off. You mm-hmm. got to let me do it. Get me, get me." And so there's that from back then. And then now, you know, I think he's at a place in his career where he's like, "No, I'll, I'll do more of these movies." And JJ goes, "No, no, you're dead." I well, that. because I remember hearing when The Force Awakens was just being developed, he's like, he would only do it if he got killed off in the first movie. That's possible. That's no, possible. No, yeah. I, I've heard but kind of both of things there. Just just to contrast this, like, I... See, the thing about Harrison Ford being in The, in the Force Awakens, I personally didn't fully like his character in that one because Han always was a person who fle- uh, like flew by the seat of his pants. And he was very spontaneous. He was very like, whatever gets me to the next place, you know. I I, th- I think I know what you're getting at because that's kind of how I feel too. I'm like, he's almost like a rock star, you know. Yeah. You want to see him in the '70s in their prime, and yeah. then you don't really want to see Robert Plant on his own, you know, doing his solo well, albums because it, okay. it's like <laughs> exactly. And so when he shows up on the Millennium Falcon and says, "We're home," I was like, that doesn't sound like Han Solo to me. That sounds like someone who's like. Oh, I cling to the past and this and that because he he let he let somebody else he pilot lost the, the Falcon. He lost the Falcon. And he didn't give a crap. He was just well, like, no. Take I, it. Obviously, they were looking for it. Remember, he tells Chewie, "Hey, we should." I told you we should have looked in the more than that. Yeah, but they, like, they were looking. They were actively looking. Yeah, for but it. why? Because they were nostalgic for the Millennium Falcon. I think that was their that was their uh, mode of op- their their mode of transportation for their business. I think. When he lost, uh, you know, we don't know all the backstory there. I'm sure there's a comic book now that's telling it, but he somehow he lost it. We know who he lost it to and who ended up with it, but uh, right. But uh, he left the resistance to when he and Leia obviously weren't getting along to go back and be a smuggler. Which which is another point to why I don't think he'd care to. Keep the Millennium Falcon. It has all these memories it's the of the fastest hunk of junk in the universe. <laughs> Come on, you know, aside, know okay, okay, well, aside from that, I don't know. I, I don't know. It just that line was always like so. I, I don't know. You know what? Too, I think it also has a little bit to do with like the whole like mysticism of a character. Yeah, I kind of like the background of Han Solo to be a little bit mysterious yeah. because he's here to just kind of be like. I liked him when he shot first too. So you know, that, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. That's what I mean. He didn't. He didn't care that that guy was going to get shot. He's like, I'll deal with it. I'll look, deal with it. Oh, I'm gonna have. I'm chalking a lot of that up to him being old. I mean, I know my dad. I look at my dad now, and he's got a uh, he's got a recliner macrame to his ass. But when I was a kid, <laughs> he was you know he was uh, acting in plays. He was designing sets. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he was doing all this stuff. When when you get as old as he is, I, let's see where you guys are. Let's no, see yeah. where no, no. Ch- you know, it's like. Time marches on. No, and I get it, especially considering that he has a kid that he lost. He went through a lot. Sure. And I do get that. But so, it's like, at, at at where he's telling me he is, he's running from Leia, essentially. He he, he thought he failed with his son, so he's running away from that, too. Yeah. I, I, it it yeah. makes me think, like, Up really, I point. thought he would be getting, like, drunk somewhere and trying to forget the past, kind of like Luke. He yeah, just like has their own way of coping. His that's co- what I'm his saying. His coping was going back to piracy. I see. Right, okay. But, like, actively looking for the Falcon was just like, I- I'll buy it only because I- it was fun to see him. Yeah. And it, was- and it was meaningful. It made the end part with Ben very, you know, powerful. Yeah. You know? But I think, like, for example, this is one of the positive things in, in Last Jedi. I appreciated the choices they made for Luke. Yeah, and uh, stuff that Mark was saying about he I heard his about character that. to go another way and this, that, and the other. And but but there's another part of that statement where he goes, "Well, now that I've seen it, I, I like what they did." And he also he also said something like he's like, "This is why I don't like to publicly like voice my opinion on the movies and stuff like Cause that." Because everybody's running with it. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. not like I'm, I'm not like obviously you know Mark is a good actor and all that stuff, but like 
he's not a Star Wars expert, right? Like he doesn't he's a know Luke what expert. He's not he, what he doesn't what know he what is. He's, he's you know in his mind he's played Luke enough that he feels he knows what his motivations are. Yeah, right. it's not uncommon for an actor to have a, an opinion about. I think the problems he had were j- jokey Luke. I think that's. That was, and by the way, that is a big point I of like controversy. That. I like it's that. The jokey Luke, where he's like, oh, you can feel it, and then he smacks her. He's like, you know, I feel like that's another character development he developed to mirror his training with Yoda. Well, I think I'll, that's what they were trying Yoda, to do. Because Yoda was messing with him when he met yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. You know, no, it's, I, it's, it's and, and there's a lot of, and there is a lot of that. I movie. actually did like that. So maybe, maybe I'm on the side of like, you know, people were like, oh, this movie needs to be more serious, but I'm like, yeah. No, I, I like that they had fun with it, you know, to some extent like that. Which I'll, is, t- I'll, I'll tell you, my, my uh, two really close friends of mine hated, with every ounce of their being, <laughs> every frame of that film. I had this guy t- came at me and he was telling me he, he, they, they didn't they didn't think one of the jokes was funny, not one of them. I was laughing through the. I loved all the jokes. I liked what Pope. Poe has already set himself up in TFA as being uh, a, a troll. Okay, so you're talking about that first scene, right? Oh, yeah. that so oh could, that is a we huge. Could, we could start. We could start right there, and then we'll just get, <laughs> we'll go on through the whole movie. Um, um, this friend said he he even misquoted him. He said oh, he, they even use today's lingo. They go, you know, they said uh, you know he's trolling you, and he's not. The line is he's tooling with you, sir. Yeah, which. There's no pro- I don't have a problem. You know, you know what's funny about that part is like uh, people people didn't appreciate. I guess you would say that that joke or whatever that he makes. Yeah, and uh, Hux was that big of an idiot. Well, yeah, and then like the first movie starts kind of the same way, where he's like, "What, what does he say to to?" Uh, he said to Kylo Ren, "He's like, well, do I talk first or you talk first? Yeah, well, he that, does that, that was with, hilarious. Yeah, and I, which. I, to me, I was like, okay, he's a jokey character, and then this movie starts, and I'm like, okay, he's still a jokey character. What exactly, <laughs> like people, I, I don't know. And, and then, not to mention, this one had like meaning behind it because he was trying to stall the, for the for the bombers to come in, right? So hot shot pilot, yeah, cocky, right? Yeah, exactly. And in, in TFA at sequence at Mosque and Otis Place, I've counted off. He when there when that when he starts that big round. Ten TIE Fighters. In in real world combat, five makes you an ace. We saw a sequence where he went double ace. Yeah. He might be a little cocky. He uh-huh. might right, yeah. be a little cocky. Uh, <laughs> that that first scene with him, like that space battle, I thought it was I thought it was fucking great. I mean I did too. I loved it. I, I was like, it this, was, this is a again, good introduction. It, it, I mentioned this while well before the cameras or before the microphone turned on, but it was like the World War Two theme that they keep going through yeah. this uh-huh. is like this is what would happen when like tiny planes would try to attack a big yes you know uh, uh what are they called the um, d17 flying fortress yeah like the, yeah but like the 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 ships that launch the planes uh, the battleships the oh launch, they would, yeah launching the aircraft carrier yeah the faster and lighter you were the harder it was for you to get shot out of the air and that's right. what poe was doing and you know the sequence with the bombers that's you you were clearing the way for the bombers to attack i love how he does works. like this weird like drift maneuver to get behind those TIE fighters in the beginning, mm-hmm. yeah. only because it's like, that's cool. I haven't seen people use X wings like that. Yeah. This, for, that for those that's, of you at home, that's well, what, they have those maneuvers in the X wing uh, miniatures game. That oh, really? exact maneuver. That's, that's weird because like template. people. Oh, started, so they got it from other things. Then okay. People started bitching about the physics of how it actually worked. <laughs> yeah. uh, and to be honest, you're like, listen, if you, if you're starting to compare, if you're trying to apply real world physics. To a Star to Wars, a Star movie? Wars yeah. movie where you're not even supposed mm-hmm. to hear laser fire, explosions, <laughs> anything like that. You're, 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 not, you're talking out of your ass movie. because you, look, yeah. the suspension of disbelief, you need to have that yeah. in this world As, to accept w- any of this. When I saw the the bombs dropping or whatever, my initial thought was like, okay. they're going to use some Star Wars stuff to explain it. That's yeah, just yeah, always yeah. how it is. I can, always, like, I can help everybody listening and everybody in the room right now. Is, uh, <laughs> everybody uh, everybody I've talked to universally really likes Empire Strikes Back, right? Uh-huh. Good movie. Yeah, everybody well, loves that. Still okay. my favorite, and top one, favorite. One, one, one of my favorite scenes is that asteroid chase when they're chasing the Falcon through the, the, the right. asteroid. And then they go and they hide inside the asteroid. Yeah. And, and, then and like there's the, 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 there's, there's the, the, the almost kissing scene and the Minox. Oh, I love yeah, that scene. That's hey, great. wait a minute, wait a minute. What was the Empire doing during that scene? Let's think for a minute. <laughs> hmm. They were inside the worm and the Empire was looking for them. In fact, there's footage of Thai bombers dropping 
bombs. Oh, this has right. been... They were doing been, death charges. They yeah, were yeah, dropping yeah. bombs out of Thai yeah, bombers yeah. to try and uh, rattle them out of there. So yeah. we've established that this universe has bombs <laughs> you can and is happy stuff. to drop them yeah. Yeah. in space. And they have a way of doing that. There's a, they, they, you could be magnetically launched. They could have, you know... Their own little guidance system. Yeah. Again, if, you're, if, if, if bombs were your problem with this movie... You're paying you attention to the have, wrong thing. <laughs> you might have some other problems you need yeah. to address in your yeah. life. You, you have know. to believe what's happening just because the, the the science of it shouldn't bother you enough to take you out of the movie because it all thematically works. Um, but but getting back on track here. Um, sorry about that. So after, that, after that big space battle, you come back and you see uh, Finn coming out in that big... Like, and his back to suit. Yes. Yeah. So, like, oh, God. <laughs> well, you don't like that. It's just like. Ernie has a problem with this. I you have don't a like problem. the back to suit? No, 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 no. I have a problem with Finn and the, the Finn and Rose story. Okay, that's what I was going to get to. Oh, okay. Right. This is where they introduce Rose, who is another thing that people were kind of like, uh, they didn't really like about the movie. Did they uh, also not like Rose's sister on the bomber? I didn't. No, I mean, that's supposed to add gravity to her plight, which it does, yeah. because, you know, the imagery of the two yin and yang esque. Looking metal. It looks like raptor claws. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, well, but when you put them together, <laughs> I know, I know. It's supposed to add gravity to that, but like a lot of people were complaining, is like, you know, you take them out of the sequence altogether, the story still works because essentially what they did, what they were trying to do, ended up failing. So it didn't matter what they did, right? Um, you know, I mean, I, this is a. I'm, I'm describing the problem, right? That people are having. With it, it. It's uh the. I didn't. I didn't really care for it. But in my head, I was thinking like, okay, they're they're gonna set up for all that stuff that. Uh, okay, so the the name of the guy is Ryan Johnson, right? He's Ryan gonna Johnson, yeah. he's gonna make his own trilogy or something, right? Right. After this, yeah. So I'm like, I think he what he's doing is just setting up stuff for his own films later on, yeah. and like even uh, like not to get too ahead of ourselves, but like the kids at the right. end, I was like, so right. that's gonna. I'm like, okay, so whatever. Who gives a shit? Like, well, we already know from the Jedi Temple that there's uh, Force users all over the galaxy. You know, uh -huh. so it, it, but this, we got to reintroduce it, that to people. Exactly, because you know, Stephen and I used to play a lot of the old Mac games. Plus, we played like uh, Knights of the Old Republic, where they started, and they, and they you Love see that, that game. Yeah, that's a great game. Um, and they see that people get discovered to be Force sensitive. You know, they don't just all stem from the same damn family. Absolutely, and they're they're taking care of that in Star Wars Rebels because there's a, there's a character on that this kid that gets found by uh, Kanan Jarrus was a he was as far as his development as a Jedi he was kind of almost there, but then everything went wonky and he didn't get knighted. Mm -hmm. And then they go to Lothal and he finds this kid who's force sensitive. He picks up on it and he starts trying to train him. Mm -hmm. And so there's. So it, that's another example of Disney saying or Lucas saying, "Hey, there's other people out there." Right. But when you when you cut yourself off from all other content and just watch the movies and then try to say, "This whole universe is crap," and here's the reason why, I'm like, "Okay, that's fine. Go ahead, but you might want to consider some more stuff before you judge, sure. jury, and execute." Yeah. True. And and Star Wars. I think with because uh, you don't have enough. You know, if you really that Close passionate okay. about it, if you're that upset about it, look into it a little bit more. Yeah. Don't just say, "I've seen what I need to see. This is horrible." End of line. That that was essentially what I had. I had problems with the Force Awakens about that. It was just it was a little too safe for me. And this movie is like basically the opposite yeah. in every single way. And it tries to like at every turn is basically flipping things on its head. Like even when. Rose says, like, hey, we're going to go to this planet and it's full of scum. And you expect to see some kind of Mose Eisley, like, bar or something well, like that. I think they said it pretty much, but I, I got the feeling they're going to a, Ve a Vegas-type planet. I'm yeah, that was just my example of, of it kind of taking a left turn when you think it's going to go this yeah. way. You know, it kind of, like, mm. uh, averts Flock your expectations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we see them go to the planet, stuff happens, and then uh, I think it's when Kylo... Is making the decision, you know, in space to whether he's going to shoot Leia or not. Mm -hmm. Oh, he chickened out straight. Yeah, he yeah. Chi he chickens out. Somebody comes in and does the job for him, and then patricide <laughs> fine, matricide not so much. <laughs> so something else happens that was pretty. He's not a Stewie Griffin. Yeah, yeah, but I think Steven's leading into the other really big point of contrition in this. Right, movie. which is oh. that Leia seemingly is dead for a second, but then she uses force to come yeah. back. 
the director put out a statement about that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. seriously? Okay. He had to put yeah. out a statement? Well, it's it. I don't think he put it out. I think it was part of an interview. How about okay. that? Okay. So basically, it's the way the way I understood. <laughs> Sorry, it. you said put out a statement. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm thinking like Star Wars is at the top. It's in the Star Wars font all the way no. down. There's stars in the background. Okay, no. <laughs> keep going. Uh, he, it's that thing where you uh, have you heard stories where there's a uh, mother and her kid in a car accident. The car's flipped over. Oh and, sure, and the sure, kids sure. Tra- yeah, kids yeah. trapped in there. And the mom and, lifts and the, the mom car, lifts right? The car. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's how they, that that is essentially what he's saying here and that under 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 such stress like that that her instinct took over and mm-hmm. she monster used the force to pull herself back in uh-huh. um, and and then her last few moments of consciousness that's what happened is right. she had a hulk moment of force using mm-hmm. um, and that that's how he's he's explaining it and I'm like okay you know I, I have to say I thought you know it, again my scientific side knows what happens to your to your soft tissue when it's exposed sure. to space. But again, we're talking about a universe where you have a ship the size of the Millennium Falcon that's able to create microgravity like we have that, that, in this room. That's exactly so what I was thinking. To, you, you have to sit there and go, every ship's got gravity and they don't have issues. So it's like, am I, am I really going to have a problem with the fact that our eyes didn't explode? You know, but, yeah. you know I'm going to let that one go. This decision is like... I understand why they did they it. They might have had longer just... term plans. Nobody was planning for her to pass away, right. possibly. Yeah. So they might have had a longer arc for her. And now Maybe. we're like, you know, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I would have to be completely behind the scenes to know exactly yeah. how that happened. Where, where I'm at on that is, uh, so I, I went into this movie basically thinking that it was going to be really bad because everyone was telling me that and that they had real big problems with the movie and all this stuff. And when I saw that scene, all I was thinking was, like was it really that bad? I don't like. like <laughs> it's I, it's, it's not like is that terrible. if that's far fetched? Like what exactly? Like like so Star Yo- Wars like, is far fetched. Yeah, guys. like I was like so so these same people that were like criticizing that are like they they loved Yoda fighting and Attack of the Clones flipping around. I'm like okay, I, so where do you draw I the line? I'm hearing a lot of people did not like that. Like and I've I've had talks. I'm go well. What else would he possibly do? Oh, well, he's old and he's crippled. I'm like okay, but he when he when he engages the Force. And again, being at his size, what's he gonna do? Just like, like force levitate up to the level? But you gotta come up with a way, a device for Yoda to be able to fight. Maybe give him a longer sword. I don't know, but right. they did the best <laughs> they, they made could a decision. with that situation. And I, that, I think that, that's even saying. Yeah, it's like they made a decision. They made a decision, and that's if it. you don't like it, okay. Like I don't. I'm just like I don't. Like, way, I, I like have... the Yoda in this film. I was been watching the prequels. Oh and yeah, the, the, all those Yodas they did in the prequels, none of them held up. I to hated Empire. that little stringy hair that he had in the, like in the, well, in the like prequels. <laughs> no, no, in the prequels when he had the like the stringy hey, hair, was I was like, pup, he was that a looks in the first one and digital in the last. No, two. that's that's what I mean. In the last two, when he had the little stringy, I was like. I don't know what this is, but I don't like it. Uh, but I like, really liked the Yoda scene. I thought that was great. Okay, yeah. So oh, let's just jump to that. Let, let's well. let's just jump to Ray and Luke and their whole. Uh, Should we reun- just do Ray, Luke, and Ren? Because they all kind of intersect. Yeah, people yeah. have problem with that whole thing too, with them communicating. That love triangle. Uh, well, no, just the fact <laughs> that, that 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 way they were able to see each other. Uh, I I'll, think it's because they don't they don't uh, explain it. Well, let which, me ju- let me just say right off the bat, uh, I think Ray. And uh, Kylo Ren were the best part of this movie. I thought like them actually, I liked that. I liked them that. them talking yes. to each other and stuff. I was like, this feels more real and like emotional than anything I saw in the Force Awakens. Like the Force Awakens was very like I did like it, but at the end, like I said, I was I was I was left with the feeling like I want to know more about Rey. Sure. I didn't get enough of it in this movie, and this movie like totally hey. like. It, Dark side it, users lie. Just want to know that. It, the, <laughs> I just that, that, that no, but that's their whole thing. Lying, lies, and deceit. Sure. So he, there, there's a very good chance he was not telling her the truth, and people have got to be prepared for that. Otherwise, this next film comes out, there's going to be even more hate. Well, yeah, even Kylo shouldn't have lied to her. Even you know, when, oh. even when he says, uh, like, oh, you know who your parents are? They're nobodies. It's right. like he could have been lying. He could have been using that to try and turn her. Yeah. Yeah. What but, they she, do. but she confirms it. She says... Hey, yeah, Dooku like, was lying to uh, Kenobi when he had him in that thing. He says, oh, no, 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 no. You know, and he's like, oh, I'll never join you. Remember, he's... Yeah, he yeah, he's well, lying there to his, try his, and turn his, Kenobi. The dark side's his, full of lies, so... His, here's <laughs> the thing, look. You, to say that, you have to give a lot, like a ton of credit to Kylo Ren about how his mind strategically works. And in my head, I have not seen him display the kind of strategy 
that 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 he's a raw requires nerve. a lot, huh? He's a raw nerve. Yeah, so like for example, like even in the last scene where he's like, destroy that person, blah blah. Yeah. He didn't take the time to look at the situation, assess what he needed to do, and then carry out decisions Who that would put that? him. It, it, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you're telling me that Ren is lying to her in some big way to later on turn her. Like I don't give him that credit. Yeah, he's not one. Of, I don't give. He's him not a that guy that plans ahead any day of the week. Um, but do, do you want to or talk he about? Believes his visions to be yeah. true. And possibly, possibly, yes. I might believe that. So we get to to Luke on the island, right. um, and uh, people even had a problem with the whole like milk thing, where he milks like uh, that. That, that does not make I, any sense I, to me. At all. I could I could give a crap about that. To be honest, I, I, like, I actually survived. thought that scene was funny when he's like, I, yeah. "That's what I mean." He's like, like, "Listen, uh, listen." That whole scene wasn't about blue milk. That whole scene wasn't about how he fishes. Blah, blah, blah. It was about how Luke doesn't give a crap that Ren is, uh, uh, Ray is following him around. He's right. going to do his daily tasks. Yeah. You can come around if you want. I'm not yes. changing my mind. Yes, yes. That's what it's about. Again, not as a blue point milk. of contention, please, please. That's what I'm saying. It's just stupid. He's like, this is what they decided to tell you. Yeah. And they said, ooh, look, hey, is this blue milk? Who knows? It's like, is it blue milk? I don't know. I, th- is it supposed to be New Hope? Who I, cares? I, I'll <laughs> say that those scenes were very, like, uh, that, that part of the movie kind of dragged for me. But I didn't like. I said it's like it's not like there's nothing in this movie that I really fucking hated with the passion. Like the, that's what I don't understand. I, like I don't people's criticisms are like very like passionate hate, and I'm like, but passionate hate for like minor, minor things that 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 are like yes, they're a problem. Yes, you could take them one way, but the overall theming all worked together. Like everything yeah. was still pointing to the to the to the theme of. Getting rid of what you think you know in terms of nostalgia yes. and forging ahead. Absolutely, okay, the visuals so were amazing. That you know, Holdo running that her, her ship into a uh, Snoke ship. The uh, uh, that on, on Crete, the red crystal and the salt and uh, just so many brilliant, beautiful there artists were some, we can all appreciate. Yeah, there were some really excellent nice work in this film. Um, so Snow, it turns out Snoke is the one that's doing that connection with the uh, with right. Ray and Kylo Ren. Right. Is that okay. confirmed in the movie? Yeah, no, he, he says, says, says that. It. Yeah, um, I took advantage of my 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 weak minded uh, whatever he's okay. You know he he's I don't know what it is verbatim, but he basically lets her know when she's in the chamber room. I did this, not him. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, and uh, also, what you guys gotta know about Snoke is, and it's not really out there. You have to dig a little bit into the books here, but uh, he's not a Sith Lord. He's a rich guy that ha- is. Uh, Force sensitive and uses the dark side. It's lore. So he's not a traditional version of like. He's he's not like your emperor. He's not like in any of the Sith lords. Even going back into the older games, the old Republic that you guys know yeah. a Sith to be. He is, uh, and they've been opening this up. Like I said, into either if you go into Star Wars Rebels, you're finding there is a this one creature on a planet that is neither dark or light. It is a force sensitive creature. Uh, that is somewhere outside of all that. It's not darker light, and you can it bo- it'll talk to both sides, uh, and it doesn't. It won't help either side. Uh, it just neutral. Yeah, it's it's neutral, but it, it's super powerful though. Real quick, what did you you said people had a problem with the way that Ray and Kylo Ren were interacting, or um, sorry, like a... some people had yeah, some people had issue that 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 was it. I've. <sighs> Things I'm hearing, just spotty things like people. Well, that's not a way. That you're not can't use the force that way. I'm like, who, uh, said? who are you <laughs> to say you can't use? I mean, we we in all these movies, we've seen new ways to use the force. They got, they even do that whole. They even explain what happened to Kenobi on uh, on the Death Star when he died. That the prequels went ahead and explained that that was special training. That something that uh, that Qui Gon Jinn picked up. Tra- told Yoda about and then Yoda tells Kenobi about and they it's not standard Jedi training it's not standard Sith training from what I understand so I I have to say at the end of you know Return of the Jedi I was surprised to see good Anakin step, yeah, that's step in there as the ghost that's the other thing that's, too is like when they're when they're, that's they dope replace when they're <laughs> When they're like blue force ghosts, it's like, what do you think people's initial reaction to that was? You know, like uh, they gave them a blue hue, but they didn't force ghost them like all the way blue. There was a slight blue um, that that might have something to denote that the there's the the force is. You know what? You know what it might be too. It's like me and Ernie played a lot of the video games. Yeah, and. He, in those games already, I'm like, okay, I can force jump now, or like I have force speed now, so I'm like, I'm open to whatever, 
You yeah, know, it, so I. But people, I think, that I was think, a complaint that I heard. People were having that. I'm but like, I, are you I, serious? But I agree with Steven. It's just like it, the force. It, it, the way that they set up the force in in the original was like it's this mysterious thing that can them. that yeah. you can that can flows through you, mm-hmm. blah blah blah, and then in the other ones they tried to make it as precise and they tried to kind of nail it down. You mean with midichlorians? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like it's trying to nail. Yeah. It's like trying to nail Jello to a tree. It's just like impossible. Yeah. But it's I, like in I this one. That choice too. In this one, I think they're trying to open it up where it's like, listen, the force is this mysterious thing, and it's in. It's power can be omnipresent, but it's also to the individual. Look, we all use Photoshop, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You guys know every tool and every no. every drop down. Yeah. No. No. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. But and that's what I'm saying. What, what is it? When that? you learn a new one, <laughs> you're like, you're oh, like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Wait, I don't have to do these other five steps. I'm not I just do this. That, I kick, I'm sorry. I that's kick, okay. I it's the fine. Table. It's all right. Um, I, I'm not saying the force is Photoshop. I'm saying that it. You know, there are things out there that are big. Yeah. And You're saying just, it's a it's a six hundred dollar program, and we're using about twenty dollars worth. Of, <laughs> right? That's the way I feel sometimes when yeah. I learn, when I learn something new. I go, oh wow, yeah, I should have yeah. been doing this this way the well, whole time. I, I just feel like every every person who is sensitive to the force, where it develops it in their own way, so they could take a different spin on it. Sure. However, and they that there's fit. other training and other things you can learn. Sure. You it, know, it, and I mean that seems viable. Wow. What just, was the so what was the deal with that whole um, cave thing that Ray falls into? Do you know the story behind well, that? Well, they, he they they outline it there. They treat it like the place on Endor that had the, the any place that's super sensitive for that where the Jedi do training or was a there's always a dark side too uh-huh. as they always try, again this is going back to it, oh, it, it's, it's like, trying to balance itself out so right. and, you know, it's super good there's going to be a place where it's super dark like in Empire on when he goes when, the when through the tree no, yeah like, when he goes, goes to yeah. the tree oh yeah. okay okay I think so it's, it's just it's, supposed it's, to be it's just that. supposed to be like that okay it is you. it's like that and I thought when she fell in there she was going to have an experience like Luke did she had something that was a little bit more I thought that was a bit strange. Was, in in my, I mean, in my where opinion, she snaps in the cool. <laughs> I thought that pool, when, based on the, what I saw happening, there, I go, "What was that water? LSD? I mean, what?" Yeah, like, what? I <laughs> think it was. I think it was again, like the. And this is a problem I have through the whole movie. It's this director doing his homework and be like, "This needs to be taken care of." So this scene needs to happen, and this scene needs to happen. That's what, how I felt about the whole Luke Yoda interaction. I enjoyed it. But I felt like, does this need to be here? You know what, actually? I, I guess I have a uh, different opinion. Uh, I thought as soon as Yoda showed up, everything after that, I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, think it, I think that Luke was, having some, yeah. I think Luke was having some serious, even more angst at that point. And it seems to me that Force Ghosts show up at that point point when that, they're about to do something. They, yeah, that's what I'm saying is, like, I feel like Yoda showing up to kind of, like, kick Luke back in a gear made more sense than, like, stuff they did in The Force Awakens where it's, like, you know, people just kind of show up seemingly for no reason right. other than cameos. In this one, it's, like, Yoda, like, oh, that's that makes so much sense. Okay. Like, he would be there to, to kick, you know, Luke out of his and, rut and... Right, and, to actually <laughs> so wake up, snap him out of it. Yeah. And otherwise, I don't know, if Yoda hadn't shown up and kind of set him there and also R2 seen in the Falcon, had those two things not happened, I'm not sure... That Luke's head would have gotten the right space to come in mm. and do what he did at the yeah, end. Because she tells okay, him like she, she tells him like Han Solo is basically dead, and he, that uh-huh. doesn't even like like yeah he has like an emotional reaction, but it's right. not like I'm like okay, okay let's get our why, shit and let's go. You know it's it, it's why Yoda and not Kenobi. Uh, I because Yoda trained him. Would you okay. have rather? Would well, you, I mean, blue he got blue ghosted by both of them. He did, but I I, I think that was a double team because they were in Empire. <laughs> I think they were afraid that he could. Get, <laughs> Sorry, he was going to get turned. He was going to get turned. Yeah, no, so that's that was the, the this that, that was, was the, more of a situation I think where his old teacher had to come back and snap him into shape. Yeah, Kenobi would have been more for like Anakin or Vader, but uh, he, well, he would have come uh, back if there was a chance that something something bad was going to happen to Luke. I think. But I will say, then, if they remember, they Luke both not live up to when when in Empire. Empire, one of my favorite scenes is when he's taking off in the X-Wing and both Yoda and, and Kenobi are having this conversation and we're like, dude, that, there, go, there goes our last hope. He's like, no, there's another one. Yeah. Like, they're collaborating, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess I'm just like... Is the guy that plays Kenobi still alive? Uh, no, he died. You're, 
Oh, you're, you're talking about ben. the the young one, young Kenobi, or Alec Guinness, the no, original one, the original one. Oh no, he no, was long gone. gone. When let's just put it this way: when when Star Wars, when New Hope was made, uh, Alec Guinness was the same age as Mark Hamill. Now, <laughs> now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. well, so. I was gonna say if, if if he had appeared in this movie, Kenobi, I think it still would have carried well, would the have same weight. It would have been digital, and it would have been you know. Sure. Okay. But like, okay. Uh, to, to, me, to me, it still would have worked, like scene wise and and you know plot wise, it still would have worked for me. Um, I just think it was cool that there was actually a reason for them to come back. You know, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, the other thing I like about that tree scene is that uh, when in retrospect, when Luke was going there to do that, the books were already out of there. The books yeah. were in the Falcon. I was like, oh man, that that. But you didn't learn that until after, right? Yeah, you didn't but learn I, that until after. So but that's, that's a confirmation. Remember, because after after we left, who took him out like, of there? Ray? I'm guessing Ray. She just yeah. jacked him and took him off. Because yeah. remember, she's like, I'm going to do this without you. And she she just took off. So right. I, I think at that she point, took... she was feeling like he, was, he wasn't going to come around. Right. And she had to do something. Uh-huh. I think, and obviously Yoda knew that too, but he... Th- he knew that Luke thought they were in there, so he's mm-hmm. like, "Screw it." That you know what? You, mm-hmm. I've heard at least two people be like, and then Yoda controls lightning. I was like, "Dude, yeah, get out of here, too, dude! I don't, like, really? I don't care." Yeah. <laughs> this whole like you're talking about an island that for one, for once, it's force sensitive already. They already told you that, okay? Two is privy to lightning because we've seen it rain and and lightning strike all over the time. Yeah, and then three has some secret hole. Where you can go in and snap and all these different... Like, yeah. I'm buying it by this point. I'm this fine. is a Force-sensitive yeah. island. It has wacky That's things get, happen on it. That, that, that lightning was more or less what I thought, too. Yeah. Was like, I was like, he made lightning. Okay. <laughs> like, I've, I've seen that and? before. Like, like, Sidious, the dark side uses... They use lightning. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I think their problem was he controlled the weather. Yeah, is what I'm saying. I, I, but I don't know. I think this leads into some other problem where people were talking about Luke's kind of end scene. Uh huh. You know where first of all he astral projects himself somewhere else. I heard there were people that, that didn't realize that that wasn't Luke on there, and I'm like, well, well, hey, 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 wait, wait. Yeah, Ernie caught that right away. I by caught the way. it. Yeah. I'll tell you where I caught it because I was watching it and I was like, okay. He dolled himself up for this last fight because he knew he's gonna blow up. Dolled? Listen. Yeah, because he's no I'm taking you through my mindset, okay? okay? He's like, okay, he dolled himself up. He got he got his old Jedi clothes on. He dolled himself up because he knows he's gonna see Luke or Leia again. And he's gonna be there and he's gonna go strut his stuff and blah blah blah. Soon as he pulled out his old lightsaber, I was like, fuck, that's not yep. him. Yep. Yeah. Well, I actually as soon as I saw him walk in there, I saw I saw the get up and I was going. Uh, fat chance he's got nice clothes on that island anyway. Well, Second yeah. off, then I was going, huh, this looks like the last time anybody saw him, the last time anybody saw him... I disproved that, was, by the way. ...was when he was, when they showed the flashback of him pulling his sword on Kylo Ren, as I, far as his facial hair. I disproved that, because remember I told you, the costume he's, or the, the black clothes costume, he's wearing... I'm talking about this. No, 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 I know, I know, but I'm saying is like... The, the, <laughs> the, the face, by the way, he was... The he was costume face. that he's wearing is completely different. Wasn't the costume? No, I know, but yeah. you're saying like his, no, his the way he cut his hair and you know his face was a little. It younger, was close blah, blah, blah. enough. It was close enough to that that I said that I, in the first thing that came to my head is like, oh, this is what the last time anybody saw him. This is what they have. For oh, a, for I, I see what you're saying. Him. So, and so might, yeah. Oh, so you're saying Kylo Ren saw that version of yeah, him and and because Leia that's, and everybody because that's the last time anybody ever anybody saw him. Oh, him. that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, but like, but when he pulled out the sword, I was like, this isn't him for two reasons. One, that lightsaber broke already. Yep. But two, Absolutely. that lightsaber is not the one that he would have had on the island with him anyway. Right. And the green one. Because he would have had the green one, but also he pointed, also didn't know that they broke it. You also right. pointed out that he doesn't have footprints oh, or anything yeah so because they of, make that, it, that sand is is pretty visually noticeable yeah. when it comes to like yeah, you know any they, kind of again kylo's a raw nerve he's not gonna be looking at the details he's, right he's, yeah, yeah. he's uh, you know he's just that that's his character would have been cool to see them fight though i will say if 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 I don't luke know, it looked like a fight to me yeah yeah that's true but if luke would have pulled out his green lights here ooh, I, I love his green lights here so yeah. much too. i mean you guys but here's the thing have it at my house. but here's the thing like I, I agree with you in that a cool fight scene would have been cool, but in my opinion, one of the best lightsaber fights is Empire because it's not much of a fight. Right. Because of what's going on behind the scenes and, and the way they silhouetted them. And like, yeah, it, it carries that's a lot more weight. Well, okay, so if we're Visually, talking... Visually, it's beautiful. If we're talking, Visually, it's I was going to say, if we're too. talking about visuals, that scene where Luke is standing in front of like all of those, oh, of those walker like things and, and Kylo yeah. Ren's ship, yeah. I was like... 
That is such George. a badass <laughs> shot. Yeah. Like that looks so cool. Like how like there's parts of this movie that you can appreciate. That's why I don't understand like the one hundred percent hate for it. So I'm like, look at look at that imagery. Like yeah. that's cool. It and, looks and, good. And you know what makes that even even more impressive is that we live in a world where digital graphics aren't impressive anymore. Uh-huh. They're just not. You see people dive off the end of the world and then they go into space and then they try like just looking at a movie like uh, Doctor Strange, you see that? And you're just like, oh my gosh, look at all this visual. But seeing Luke stand there with a bunch of digitally uh, uh, added machines, but you still get that feeling like, oh, yeah. whoa. Like, yeah. you know that's not yeah, there. It, you, it, as Steven, know it's not there, but right. you're still buying the right. scene as he's standing up to all these things. It's right. like, that's Did, really hey, impressive. I still gotta get, before we move away from lightsabers, man, I still have to give props to Ray Park. I still think that's some of the best uh, lightsaber fights in, uh, in Phantom yes. Menace. His stuff, that guy... In Phantom Menace, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I just... Uh, he... Look. That's the only good part of that I challenge movie. you guys right now. Try and do just one of those movies. No. <laughs> You'll break but that's a hip. The only, that, that, that's yeah. the only good part of that movie, in my opinion, is that fight. Uh, let me backtrack a little bit, because um, we got ahead to Luke coming back to the that salt planet or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just wanted to come back to... Kylo Ren bringing Rey to Snoke. Oh, yes. right, right. Um, yeah, yeah. Which, in my opinion, was like the greatest scene. I, I don't think I'll ever forget seeing that scene in theaters. Our theater, like, our theater erupted. Yes. Ooh, and cheered when, 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 when they fought the When, when the Kylo guard. Ren and Rey go back to yes. back, I yep. was like, this Everybody is so it. badass. They, I love this. Visually, that, that whole scene. scene worked so well. Whoever, yeah. whoever the visual designer for that throne room, yeah. or whatever that's supposed to be, just knew exactly what they were doing and knew exactly what they wanted to convey in in, in every aspect because everything was so nicely choreographed and set up. There's a scene where like Ray is being held to the neck by one of those red guys yeah. and then she drops her lightsaber, grabs it yes. with the other hand and like slices him yes. like an anime ninja. I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is so cool. This is like they're they're going crazy. How are people I, having I, like, a problem with this movie? Is what I'm trying know, to figure right? out. Yeah. At that scene alone, I'm just like. Mind blowing, yeah, Just absolutely. Totally, I, I, I really enjoyed that scene a lot. Yeah. Um, and as far as like, uh, I guess people were upset that like Snoke got killed, uh, pretty easily, right? Because they're saying, Oh, he's supposed to be some major Sith. Well, when you find out he is not a Emperor level Sith Lord, uh huh, then it starts to make a lot more sense that he's just using it and that he's not a true devotee. I, I think, uh, I think that was another, uh, another like left turn or whatever you want to call it that that they they averted your expectations and i was like that's good what what do i care like again again, this is like this is the director i'm going to keep it reading this because i think this is why people have the problems every time he has to do a correction because of what people think is going to happen and they try to make the turn and everything like that like snoke like i remember the day after i saw you called me and you're like we need to talk about this (laughs) like you actually called me and you're like yeah we need to talk and he would try to explain how snoke was like what he actually was as opposed to what we thought he was going to be. Mm-hmm. I remember I was talking to Steven and I told him like when we left the theater I was like he was supposed to be this big deal and then he just is gone. He's just gone. Hey, Boba Fett was supposed to be a big deal but well, look, uh, he yeah, takes one look, shot in the backpack look, and slams up against a barge Hold up, and he's Kev. A- hold up. Because okay. right? me and Steven saw a documentary that explained that Which whole... One? That whole Boba Fett explosion. And it, I understand what you went through. Remember we saw that documentary, The Toys That Made Us? Uh-huh. And they had that whole t- thing where Kenner was like, we, we got to make crap for the next movie. He's like, what do we know about the next movie? Absolutely nothing. All We know that there's going to be Boba Fett. Oh, that's Let's they... make a special edition toy. And you're like, and then yeah, kids of that. your age were like, there's a, sp- who is this guy? And there was this, all this like built up. Hype. Like hype, this little cartoon of Boba Fett, and it's like yeah. this is gonna be this new badass blah blah. And you see him for like ten minutes, and, he's and he does nothing. He's just like standing there being cool. And you guys are like, this is the coolest character ever. <laughs> Every, I everybody understand. was like, everybody loved Boba Fett. My, I, one of my my friend Max, who I've told you about, is uh, is a Boba Fett in the in the five hundred first. Oh, that's and, cool. And uh, he's all about man. He's got Mandalorian tattoo, and I mean, big I, time. There are so many that, and I was going so. Okay, everybody's tripping because Snoke gets off, and what 
up until the prequels, what did you know about Boba Fett? That's you what can, I'm saying. You it's can like, claim expanded universe books, and there were plenty, yeah. and so on and forth. But if you're going to be a movie guy, if you're going to take that movie stance with me and say, ah, the movie's all I need to know. <laughs> what did you know about Boba Fett before the prequels, and why was he so awesome? I mean, in the in You're the saying, like, so with Snoke is the same deal? Or right. Why, why is everybody so upset because this guy, a bad guy, got killed? Um... You know, we, we know he's bad, but we don't know how bad. We knew Boba Fett was bad, but we didn't know how bad. Boba Fett was not bad. We don't know that, but then we he didn't was, know. He was a mercenary. And he's a mercenary, sure. And, and as a person who does a lot of freelance, I can say sure. myself in the same way. <laughs> okay. Hey, there's a lot of freelancers <laughs> on that show. Listen, if you got the cash, Bosk, IG-88, <laughs> Forlom, all those guys. IG-88 was in uh, Shadow of the Empire, right? Yeah, yeah. He was with yeah, the he was, he was Dash Rendar. Media. I remember that. Uh, cool. Here's a great little uh, tidbit. Uh, so in the uh, original Star Wars Cantina, New Hope, uh, behind the bar, mm-hmm. where the bartender is, if you look at that center section, it's uh, there's like about uh, a dozen uh, IG-88 hits. Oh, really? Yeah, that's look cool. at that again. Oh, right? okay, all, I gotta go back and watch yeah, that. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, all. Yeah. So what I, was, what, what I was saying, too, is that like the way that they were trying to make this movie mirror the other ones i get i i'm i guess what i'm trying to say is it's not like the other movies and i like that because of it and like i guess you could say that's more of a just like a me thing like i just like that they did something different but i like they're pushing the story forward they're yeah it's like forward. it's we're like... not hanging out around oh my gosh what are they going to do it's like oh stuff happened moving on not to mention it's like they're gonna make another one next year, you know. Yeah. Like they're gonna make more after that. It's like <laughs> they already got plans for a new trilogy. And I hear people saying like, "Oh, I'm not gonna watch the next one. I don't care Fine. about Star Wars." I'm like, "Ah, uh, they're gonna I'm watch like, the next one." They're, they're totally three gonna prequels watch the next came one. out. You guys said you weren't gonna care about the next <laughs> one. I'm pretty sure you saw all of. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, hey, I remember liking the prequels, seeing them in the movie theater when they came out. L- let me, uh, let me, let me uh, get back to uh, Last Jedi real fast and um, just close up. Finn and Rose's little adventure on, oh, on the yeah, Casino sure. Planet. Um, so they meet that hacker guy, uh, Benicio del Toro. Yeah, let's right? just call him Benicio del Toro because I remember uh, his name. Which I didn't think was that bad. Like uh, uh, I, I, I thought just he had it and lost it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> did I you, think. Did I you think... like him or did you? What did you think? I'm of that interested character? to see. Yeah, I, it, it's kind of he is. You guys were talking about Han Solo being kind of washed up and mm-hmm. TFA and stuff like that. Uh, I think he is the. Uh, new version of what a pirate is in this in this universe. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. we saw a little bit of that in yeah. TFA with uh, Balatik and Conja yeah. Club. You know, it's a whole different era of, you know, like back in the 60s, we had hippies. In the 70s, we had hippies. Now we have hipsters. Mm-hmm. You know, it's there's a new version of... Everything. You know, people right. will argue and say, hipsters aren't hippies. I'm like, well, mm. I was there, and I see what now. I can compare the two, and there is a little crossover. Oh, yeah. No, they're not identical, but you know. So there's. So I think he might be the new generation of like of like a Han Solo type pirate. Obviously, he's a privateer. Mm-hmm. He's he doesn't care who's paying him, whether it's uh, the good guys or the bad guys. He does a little explanation on the yacht where he's saying, yeah. "Hey, man, look, there's not there's an X wing here. So they're selling to both sides." Listen, like I told this to Stephen in the theater. He was one of my more favorite. Uh, of the new people that they said, initially I thought he was okay. I mean, uh, I haven't seen the movie again. Maybe mm-hmm. I may, maybe mm-hmm. I won't like him the, the second time. But I, I thought it was like I hope they bring him back. I was like, I'm whatever, gonna, he's I'm fine. See more. His performance he's... was so like, so like laser focused because I love Benicio del Toro. I think he's a great actor. And the, I do too. If I if he makes like, in any movie he's been in, he always makes a decision about how his character looks, DJ. talks, and everything. Yeah. He has such a weird. It's it's almost like Jack Sparrow. He reminded me of Jack. Yeah, Sparrow a little almost, bit you know? because it's like. Yeah. I know he has this past. I know he's good at what he does because he talks like that. But he has that stutter. Because Jack. And that stutter. Oh, is, you didn't is, like that. No, no, no. The stutter I liked because the stutter is something a problem he has, which is why he's not sitting pretty. Why he's not like swimming in gold mm-hmm. that stutter gives me a sense of there's like, something, something happened to it, him it's like his twitch kind of like how the joker would like lick his lips or whatever yeah, that yeah, yeah. Is. It's, mm-hmm. it's something that has, I, I could see that yeah. yeah yeah so every that decision and why he's like dirty and blah blah and he's locked up and blah like he he's so relaxed and confident and that at the same time he stutters it it's such a complex character yeah, I'd be that exists. More. Like you know how Kevin was talking about that neutral thing. Uh-huh. He exists outside of everything because he's like, listen, 
good, bad, Jedi, blah, blah, blah. Just do, just whoever pays you is who's good today. Um, okay, you know? so and that, a- after that we get to like that whole kind of climax of, of Finn's, uh, Finn and Phasma having like this reunion where like he oh. finally gets to like I get, I could care less about that. <laughs> I know, but there was there was a point in contention I heard about this where people are going, Hey, he was a garbage man. How could he know how to fight? Does anybody in the room here do you guys have any relatives that were in the military? Yeah. Dude, it <laughs> they went through everybody went through my parents were in the Air Force, they went through basic training. Uh-huh. Uh there's a so yeah, there's a basic they, level I of didn't, training I didn't, so you have to go through it. Went to, yeah, or otherwise he wouldn't have passed to get on that. Yeah. That landing ship yeah. to be a stormtrooper, they yeah. would have said, "You know what? You're four F. Why don't you stay on the big ship? We're gonna take the." B-. He obviously made it to the level of you yeah. can fight. Just, just yeah. for the record, I didn't have a problem with him fighting. Nor I. I, I think I think no, I think it's cool to see him fight just because he's a little scrappier. He's yeah, he's definitely I, not like you know Ray, where she's like a little more like. Yeah, and he used a sword in the last one. Um, I don't. I think he. I think he. What we saw in the first movie is he does not like to slaughter people, but he will. F- he will fight if the cause is right and, uh-huh. and protecting or taking down Phasma and taking down. You know, then he has his motivation for fighting. I think is right. I think what saved that scene for me, like a lot like Ernie, I was kind of like. I mean, these characters are whatever to me at, at this point in the movie. I'm like. Phasma's back, okay, that she's fucking, like, the Boba Fett, basically, of this movie, right? Or right. she's just, At like, least, yeah. she's her death well, is always, like, that way, didn't yeah. She? I <laughs> it's, mean, yeah. It's always ambiguous whether she's dead or not. Um, oh, by the way, there's spoilers in this podcast, if anybody's listening. Oh, yeah, there's spoilers. Oh, uh. <laughs> um, visually, I thought that scene looked so fucking good on the, on on, on that it big screen. The, the fire in the background, there was stuff falling in the background, and they, they were, like, fighting. I was, like... That that is a really cool triumphant moment that they gave Finn here. Oh yeah, you know, because yeah. especially in Force Awakens, I'm like, he fights that you know that traitor guy for a second, and then like Kylo Ren like slashes his back. I'm like, they're giving this guy nothing, you know, as yeah. far as like triumphant moments. But this moment was like, wow, like you know, he gets he gets one of these visually stunning scenes as well. It's nice that they that they did that for him. Absolutely, um, I think it's nice that they did that for him. It's not it's not a highlight for me. But yeah, I like I pro- said. I don't have a problem with it in the movie, to be honest, but it's just like, it, it happened, and I'm not too bothered by it. Did you have the a BB-8, problem with- yeah, I was The BB-8 say- thing, I was like, this is what, one of those arts. trash can? No, BB-8 no, 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 BB-8 the- in the trash can fight is, is when he's on the walker thing, and I was like, this is one of those R2 <laughs> moments. I thought that was hilarious. From, like, the original, like, when R2 successfully, like, uh, zaps him, or yeah. he goes like, whoa! My, then, like, my only... It's whatever. Yeah. In my head, I was like, "These things pilot the fucking ships or whatever, right?" So I don't. Yeah, like... yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, well they, they're like a they're like a co-pilot. They're technical, so I didn't have a problem with the fact that maybe BB-8 could have figured out a, a, that a it could that yeah. it could. Why wouldn't it? I mean, it, 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 it look they they've done it in all the other movies where uh, astromechs are able to plug into city computers sure. or this shit, and so there's some common machine language. Yeah, I mean, hey, let's, otherwise, listen. because they have BB units. Yeah, because like R two R two sticks his weird <laughs> prong thing <laughs> into like right. uh, computers and hacks. Them. I, I in my head, I was like, okay, maybe the way they executed it was a bit silly, but the idea wasn't so crazy to me. Right. No, I, I think was like, I, I was like, if you were to read in the script, BB eight pilots. A, a thing I'm like okay that happens all that the happens. fucking time right like it's not, it's not units in the first order we saw that yeah so yeah, why it's... wouldn't you know I'm not saying that they're piloting ships the piloting walkers but it's conceivable that him BB-8 him whatever it could be a she I don't it. know I don't want to offend anybody in the audience <laughs> um, uh, but that that it you know he's had to do a lot of ha- probably hack stuff being uh, in the resistance yeah he's he's got so a lot of jobs might ha- he might be uh, have some pre predisposition in his programming to figuring stuff out well i think i think the whole setup for that is that there's a dark side bb8 if you want to call him that the black one that i call him i call him bb hate yeah (laughs) that's pretty good bb hate so there's some similarities in the robots they use for all their different stuff so i i would just assume just just assume that they use the same hardware i would assume they use the same software Yeah. yeah so if software is kind of universal in this in this universe well, R2 yeah. uh, weapon trash compactor guys. yeah but weapon weapon software would probably be similar so the yeah. weapon system for like a, a, a starfighter would be similar to a walker I, 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 I buy it but it's just not one of my favorite parts in the movie yeah it, like I said I was like I'm I'm okay with it yeah, I'm okay and, with and it. I won't I, I don't have like this burning but there are people that have problems with it I mean well, I mean th- those moments like these parts that I've been talking about like the Phasmophy like BBA this is what puts 
this is why I don't put it as high as Empire. Because uh-huh. in Empire, and that's every fine. and that's fine. Yeah, like I said, that's fine. But like all these parts in Empire, all, all, focus on this big, you know, plot point, and then these little ones are like, well, we gotta wrap up Finn and Rose. It, it we gotta, we yeah, gotta do some homework. Finn and here. Rose oh, could have been like its own like mini series on TV it or something. Nice standalone. Um, but uh, okay, so we can. I guess we can fast forward here to like the end of the movie, basically, because yeah, yeah. we've, we've talked about most of it. It's a lot um, to talk about, to be honest. I, I just want to point out one scene when they're on that salt planet. Mm-hmm. There's a scene where the Millennium Falcon comes in, and it, it Ray is piling in it, and it gets those things behind it. And they go into the planet, mm-hmm. and the like the music like kicks in. I was like, oh, this is so great! Like, I love this. <laughs> it was almost like in uh, in Jedi when they go into the when when uh, was in Lando, and uh, what's his face? The guy that's all fucking alieny um they go into the 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 oh, 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 return of the jedi oh, yeah when okay, they go yeah. into it and they blow it i'm like this is so great this is what i want to see i want to see the millennium falcon fly around this is, the, <laughs> this is what i came to the fucking movie theater like uh, again it's like visually i'm like i'm, I'm blown away by this movie the, I don't the know. visuals are supported by the fact that you you Nine dig these characters yeah. they which was it the... Nine numb. okay yeah. he, he does his homework they, they make sure that every scene has uh, an emotional connection to it, uh-huh. you know, because Chewie's piloting it and Ray's on it, so you care about those characters coming back because they were on their way from the, the the planet and they get there in the nick of time, and you're just like, yes, they made it, like, yeah. you know that it's great, and 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 I see why people like us would get it. Didn't you say that the 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 music? Did you mention that already? I really yeah. liked how the music yeah. kicked in. Yeah, the music from that uh, movie kicked in here. I mean, it was slight because I didn't actually hear it. But yeah, so then they escape through the back. Cool the cave. Uh, Ray Ray moves some rocks around. Uh, and then and it plays they, back to Luke's line. Yeah, it's yeah. Not just me removing rocks. But okay, it, sometimes yeah. it is. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but you know, and then spoiler, Luke dies. <laughs> uh, which which they actually said. Uh, Kylo Ren at one point says like he's like, oh, that type of trans, yeah, whatever, like telepathy thing. This all that would kill you. So they kind of, you know, yep. right? They they kind of foreshadow that, like, hey, if anybody else is gonna do this, I love his line. See you around, kid. Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to see what JJ does with the next. <laughs> <laughs> I will say with that scene because I I, I I that scene to me meant something different to Stephen because when Stephen saw it, he said like, oh, he just died, right? Uh-huh. And while he was looking like he was poetic, he was looking at the moons or, or the suns. To me, it felt like he. Had since he had cut himself off from the force and then turned it back on, essentially, like he opened the faucet and he let the force mm-hmm. flow through him again. Um, I think that his his what do you call it? Astral projection of himself, mm-hmm. I guess that's what you call it. Was so like he had to be so one with the force that he just became one with the force. I think it just taxed him. I think, it, think so. It, but it, why would he disappear? And not just because, feel over. Well, I'll tell you why. Is we've got we've gone we went through this. This is like it when when you're about to die. There's two ways this can go. You can flip, fall over as a corpse. Sure. Or if you if, style. If, yes. If you <laughs> if you had the training, which is yeah, you're right. But did they never? They I've never seen them give him of that course, training. Of course not. But we don't know all everything that happened to Luke after Episode Six. Maybe you could say some of the books and stuff and explain it, but it would be just as easy for them to say that, oh yeah, Yoda gave him the training. Right, but if you take the theme of this movie, where they're saying the Force can be anything to anyone, I buy that he just had a moment where he just became one with the Force, because everything that's been happening in this movie has been like, oh, you can do that with the Force? Or you can do that with the Force? You're saying he did it without the training? Yeah, it just, it it was, you know, a, a perfect storm of everything that was happening. That's true. Could happen. Because again, you're turning you're turning all this stuff on its head, and then now you're you're now Luke has become like just this this perfect storm of things that have made him one with the Force again in a different way. Um, let me just uh, go ahead and I guess bring us to our, like our last topic or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, does what would you do to improve this movie? Um, if 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 anything, um. Because I know I've had some gripes with it. I know Ernie has some gripes with it. Um, I personally, I would say, like, Finn and Rose's whole thing, it could have been okay. done another way, basically. Like, right, right. That, that would be the only part I might go in and retool, because they did find the guy that had the rosette, but they so quickly changed to someone else, and so easily got caught. I'm, you know, it's like a bit of buffoonery. It, you know, they weren't 
you know, they parked on a beach. That's the best they could do. It's, I mean, there's so many things I just go, okay, well, if I don't want to pick that apart, you know, maybe they aren't the best uh, undercover agents, these yeah. two. She works in a hangar. He did, that's not even his. They're just trying to do something in a desperate situation, which I completely sure. understand. But I, I sure would like to have known a little bit, you know, it's like, I wish they could have made contact with the guy with the flower at least rather than say, oh, there he is. Was it supposed and to be then, a red herring because it was red? I mean, he's, he's <laughs> gone and now we're with DJ. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm like, okay, well, I guess maybe, you know, I am not a writer. There, uh, There's probably <laughs> people in the audience that are screenwriting fans or screenwriters that have an exact explanation as to what kind of plot device that is and why that worked or sure. whether this side or the other. I can't make it work in my head. I'm like, well, they should have had, they should have had a moment where they got to talk to this guy for a couple seconds mm -hmm. or something. I feel like there should have been that connection. Hey, you got the rosette. We were sent by so-and-so and blah, 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 which I guess would be cliche to do that, but I just felt like that was like, oh, there he is. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> you know, they just... It is a bit and there's a, there's there's a in the movie there was obviously a uh, they held on the shot of that particular person who was with the thing looking at them yeah for longingly like what uh, hey, well, let's uh, you I know think, what let's see what hit the cutting room floor that, yeah. that's always a thing I, because I, I, there's a lot of stuff in the prequels that hit the cutting room sure. floor I, I told Ernie that after we left the movie I was like do you think maybe like. He dropped the pin, and like this, <laughs> and this guy just picked it up and snapped it on, uh, or like, did did was that guy actually the yeah. guy they were supposed to find? That or felt what? that felt disjointed to me, mm -hmm. and I'm not quite sure why. So we find well, usually we find that out later in what got edited. Yeah, and, uh, I, I guess so. To, to be honest, what I would do is I would start eliminating certain characters that they put in, like Rose as as. As, You're gonna uh, say that pink-haired lady, aren't you? I'm gonna say the pink-haired lady. I'm gonna say Rose. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. What I'm saying. Her ship into no, no, no. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that uh, there's there's a, a couple of people who already stated. This, oh, you're but saying I, we didn't need her at no, all. No, I think Leia could have filled that spot. Which, really by the easily. way, was another scene that was like Leia drive the ship into the. Yeah, yeah. I I, I could see Leia doing well, that. Well, that would have been would have been great if you knew she was going to pass away but i think like from no what I no understand, but she had they had plans for her in, in the next one no oh. but considering how they're just kind of trying to leave the old lineage behind i kind of think as as they're getting rid of han they probably get rid of leia and then they probably get rid of luke i i think luke could have left in the last one and leia could have left in this one real quick saying. right but when carrie passed away there was a there was a bunch of talk at that time about the, that they had the way they'd set this story up, there was a, there were, they had a bunch more to do with her in nine. No, no, I, I understand. So, I'm just, I'm just saying right. what I would do to fix it because, in, in in this story without looking ahead, in this okay. story, that moment almost seemed like that would have been Leia's. That could have been Leia's moment. You know? I get what you're saying. Yeah. Because Especially, the whole the whole transition with her and Poe and then this other lady. You're right. That would be they could have saved a lot of time had they had they had some clue that she was. Uh, using again, or she was going to pass away. Yeah, yeah. That would have been a great way to do it. You're yeah, absolutely and, and, right. And, but and Poe, especially by the way they honest, did it, that tells you they did not know that. No, they did not. Uh, know let that. me just say real just quick: like, the way they did it too, I actually thought that scene was super fucking cool. Like totally the way the the way, like because like how many times have you thought of that as like a kid playing with Star Wars toys? Like, what if this ship like hyperspaced <laughs> into this? Sh you know, like it's just one of these things that like. I've never seen it in a Star Wars movie, so no. that the fact that like they got that like, I guess creative with it, uh, and, and the and the way they do it too, like the sound is off. Yeah, it's yeah. like completely silent. I was like, dude, this is so much. This so is much so impact. cool. Yeah, like yeah. this is not this just is... physically, but visually. Yeah. Right. So and, I, so, and, and hit some of the other ships behind. I love that yeah. some of the pieces went sh shunting off. Yeah, yeah. Some of the, I mean, I there's like, so much of it. Of course, it would happen. It's like a shrap shrapnel bomb going off. Yeah, I, I want to see I mean, a feature it just on, personally, work on that scene. Personally, in the Force Awakens, I thought one of the cooler parts was Finn and Poe talking. That yeah. that bromance or whatever they got going on, I yeah. thought instead of having Rose, they should have more Poe and Finn because their 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 relationship yeah, would have been true. better if they kept going with it. Well, but they wanted I'm... they wanted to introduce Rose. You're right because well, because let's just, let, let, let's let's cut let, let's cut to it. It's <laughs> demographic playhouse what, uh, are we, what are we missing here you know what? <laughs> that's exactly what i told ernie too right. i was just like you know they put another uh you know ethnicity in here and then it's like maybe maybe now they have everyone everyone covered and, and you know Disney like Disney sure likes to make sure everybody's happy and right. I, yeah, I get it that. but like like as much as i did like as much as i do appreciate the performance that rose like put in there the whole that whole forced romance i i i don't hate it but i didn't exactly love it um i thought it, it, with all the time saved with Poe and Finn going to do this adventure, 
instead of Rose and all that stuff. There's a lot of time to be saved without that whole bombing sequence and it's that had whole. Had on that little adventure, this might have might have been a little more efficient. Exactly, right. because yeah. he's the trained like. Yeah, he's see, got these, the training. See, that's what I mean. It's like in in this in this plan, you got two people who don't know what they're doing going on this plan instead of one guy who knows what they're doing and the other person going to help. Yeah. Right. It, it, like it makes sense you know I actually, and, and Rose could have been there going like oh uh, uh, you know hey hey they're not doing anything they're in this room blah 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 like she could have been a distraction like she, I think she, ultimately they end up becoming a distra- distraction is yeah there, well in, in, in the whole point of the when movie when they get but, on the Snoke ship they're all looking at them and everybody's dealing with what they were trying to do and what DJ uh, you know feeding the information of this. So I see think but he's, I, his, his character could have been fleshed out even more because without Having to introduce Rose and have that sequence, more time is saved for them to develop that whole sequence. Uh, I so, agree, but uh, so unfortunately, less, there's a demographic here. Exactly, yeah. it's just like less characters would yeah. make things would 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 be, you know, much better. Plus, if you get rid of Rose and you have Poe and Finn going on this adventure, that puts Poe on the ship, and then Poe and Finn could be fighting Phasma at the same time, we, which would yeah. elevate her as right. she's taking on two You're people right. at the same Missed time. Opportunity. Missed opportunity. You see what I mean? Like, less characters yeah. would make it super focused on these, so you would really love I actually thought Finn was going to die in that scene where he's, like, headed towards the Death Star detonator I or whatever sh- the fuck I, 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 I was, like, in the theaters, like, he's not going to make it. You Something's know, going to happen. You know, what's, you know what, though? Like, everyone was talking about, like, oh, there's a big spoiler in the movie. Was that it? And, all this, <laughs> and I thought that was it. I thought, like, okay, so Finn's going to die. That's the big spoiler. Because I had already thought, like, okay, if Luke dies, that's not a big spoiler. Like, what the fuck do you guys yeah, think is going to happen? Sp- like, Luke dying was not a spoiler. Right? Um, I... I- and it oh, turns man. out that was like the big spoiler, which I was like, the whole movie I was like, okay, Leia dies. That's the spoiler. She doesn't die? Okay. Finn dies. Finn's gonna die. Yeah, Finn spoiler. doesn't die? I was like, what? what? Of all the people dying, I was like, they're not gonna kill off I, I even the people were most upset over Snoke dying. Like, how could this happen? <laughs> they love like, that guy. I give you know two about the about ascension of, you guys played those old, the old video games. Again, the Sith tried it by having a gang of Sith, and they yeah, all they turned on each other. It comes down, there's always two. two. And the way you ascend is the apprentice kills his master yeah. and then takes on it and so i'm like okay what about this doesn't fit the star wars universe it, it, well, he's again, it doesn't matter like what? you know what's funny is I, when i when a person a friend of mine came from cnn on thursday night and i was like this is what i think is gonna happen and she's like you're right up like 98 percent right there's one thing you don't know and i was like okay and that's the one thing i didn't know that finn doesn't die but it's like really heavily implied that he's going to uh-huh he's like heroes die for their cause or whatever and i'm like okay that's that's fine I'll buy that. I'll buy them that you know her kissing Finn at the end. I'll buy it. It's fine. But at least he that's, kissed, that's what I would. At least he kissed someone. <laughs> like, here's what I gotta say. like I said about the Force Awakens, I was like, you guys are like, is this a romance or not? Like what the f- like? I don't want to wait for the next movie to ha- have all these questions answered. Well, you had like, to. Well, I guess you didn't have. You to know, like it. that's what I was saying about Force Awakens. Like that. This one was very much like. Okay, here are your answers. There they are. Like, great. I, but that's I really, essentially. I really hope all the haters get well. I, mean, I really <laughs> hope that, that they come around and say, "Gosh, you know, maybe some of this stuff isn't as bad as I'm imagining." Well, that's what I'm be. saying too. Is like, you know, visually, it's a stunning movie. Like, yeah. if you can't appreciate, like, as far as that, like, you know. I, uh, FYI, I did enjoy Alien Three from a visual standpoint. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna, you know, I was disappointed that's... that we didn't. But you know, so it's like, hey. <laughs> That's so, a huge, it's like he's calling it back all the way to the beginning of the podcast yeah. <laughs> right but that's that's what I would say about fixing this one is like less characters more focused on their the ones you already have you already set them up you use this one to develop them then start killing off people in the next one yeah. sure why not you, you you try looking at the bottom line of a major oh, studio geez, and okay. like that's but... that's the problem is that it's it's a as much as it was this guy's visual I'm surprised they let him do all that stuff you I know? yeah you know what it is It is impressive and I think that's why this movie turned out as good as it did is like Disney was like okay listen you you guys you guys didn't like it when we were all over it which is Force Awakens like uh-huh. they were like we gotta be all over this guys okay we're gonna give it to somebody they're gonna do whatever they want with it and how are you not still happy because if you if you didn't like this <laughs> one that was a uh, what is it a community Dem- demographics listen dem- uh, I'm going oh, here we go. demographics play a huge role <laughs> Let me ask you a quick question here. Do you honestly think that uh, the movie Frida with Selma Hyde won Best Achievement in Makeup over Lord of the Rings? No. Yeah, well, it did. I know <laughs> it did, know but I know and, and we all know why. Of course Mexican we know why. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And I, and I go, so people buckle, Lucasfilm buckled, and they added Rose and I her know. sister. And I'm like, I okay, know. well, you know, it's like, boy, we could go to war over that one. I'm like, it didn't But I'm not movie, going to but war. You're, everything you're saying is absolutely right. It would have been better if they would have focused on the characters, but they got, at the end of the day, they yeah, got a business The bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> I actually hope they, uh, I, I know this has nothing to do with what you guys just said, but I hope they use that green lightsaber in the next <laughs> film because I love we that. We don't know where it is, really. I mean, Dude, we don't know well, where I it is, mean, right? We, we, he uh, he threw it away on the Death Star, and then he picked oh, up yeah. his dad and carried him to a shuttle. Sure. Did he grab it? Mm, I, he I, has I, it I mean, above uh, Kylo, right? He has the green one. Yeah, he's got it there, so he must have picked it up. So, <laughs> or so what I know because it. Kylo uses his old lightsaber. He uses and a then blue he one. He, to, well, Kylo's using a blue one. Oh, wasn't right. it? Wasn't well, it? I have to look again. Okay, There's so much going on. But I remember when when Luke twice. strikes him, the hilt of it looks it will, like his old. I will say it. that awesome. part. Those parts were cool too. I really would. I really would have appreciated more of like Luke's uh, time with Kylo in you know, the past. There's no reason that they couldn't in this next movie do a deeper flashback into that time at when he was training. Every no, time. yeah, and then an excuse which to bring would, Mark Hamill back, which right? Would be super cool. Right? Yeah, everybody uh, want to see that. So, yeah. but like I also, by the way, I didn't. I, I when I was watching the this one. Uh, the uh, the part where, in the original trailer for the Force Awakens, there's that part where Luke is having the voiceover and he's like he puts his hand on R two. Uh-huh. I didn't realize that was from this movie, not from Force Awakens. Oh well, yeah, this is like they, they, he has they shot it for that, but they've they've obviously been using that footage across. Sure, the sure, films. sure. But I was like, oh, this is where, oh, this is that missing piece. This is here. Yeah. Is. Also, I appreciated that. Also, um, <laughs> I mean, I know it's just nostalgia, but like. Anytime C three PO was just like in a scene, I was like, "This guy's fucking funny." <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a shot where there's there's a scene where like Finn or somebody or Poe like moves him out of the way, and he's just like, oh, oh, and he makes like his little C three PO noises, yeah. and I'm just like, "Oh, this guy." I, I really this guy's appreciate. Great. I love this guy. I really I appreciate that they really downplayed him into only like, listen, you just need a little yeah, dab. He, you just not, need a little dab. At he's not overused, and, and neither is uh, R two. They're right. they're both just used like very like yeah, yeah, yeah. sprinkles with me. It was yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. You know, it's 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 the difference. It's the difference of like you gotta let your character shine, but still, you know, for people who have watched for the longest time, give him a little something. Give him yeah. a little something. to see what they do with R two going on because really. He's he almost was, at the end of his battery. Luke's, he was Luke's. He was he was in Luke's care. They, can, they can't change his battery. Well, suppo- like that's why there's that's why he's powering down supposedly, right? Oh yeah, in Force Awakens. In the Force Awakens, like that's why he's been in saving battery mode or whatever, because he's an old droid. Right. I'm sure they. It, I, I assume BB-8 is his new version. So why mm-hmm. would they? I mean, listen, Kev, I'm a collector <laughs> of old technology. Okay, <laughs> but once the new laptops come out, you throw the old one away. Eventually. Or you pay hundreds of dollars to find a vintage. Oh, battery. we didn't. We didn't even talk like, about that scene. What? That scene where like, where Luke he shows Luke, Luke Leia's. No, oh. yeah. <laughs> he's in, like in that's the, a low blow. In the theater, I was actually almost like, "Fuck!" Like, I can't believe he just did My that. And, yeah, and I, I don't know what yeah, I don't old know equipment if it, you were saying, Ernie. Yeah. yeah, hey, it is old equipment. I don't know if it was just nostalgia but i was actually getting like a little choked up i was like oh that's so i thought it was cool too i was yeah, like man he, it was, he did that i mean that that <laughs> had even more power behind him because of the unfortunate death of carrie fisher yes yeah so it's just like oh my heart but it was but I'm, I'm right with that whole r2 thing it's like you you just upgrade you don't go back and like i do because i like to you know pay hundreds of dollars for old technology because it's nostalgic to me it's but hey Hey, but he's st- until until he's not functioning, you'll be useful. He could yeah, obviously yeah. still I, I, do. I, I would I wouldn't be surprised if in the next one R two or C three will shut down permanently. I mean, could happen. They are pieces of technology. So, I mean, be, we love them, right? But even Luke in the original movies was just like these are these are drawings. You know, yeah, I wouldn't. In the next one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know Ernie might be joking about that, but I wouldn't even I wouldn't be surprised if that was like some kind of angle in the new trilogy. That'd be like crazy. Because you know, remember R2 no, no, no. shut down because no, he wasn't around Luke. I mean the angle of like See oh these, to turn, yeah. these guys like to collect <laughs> retro stuff. Yeah. Like think about how people like to collect like NES or Super Nintendo. That's what I'm saying. Like, like if there was some guy that's just like, Oh, you got an original R two unit? It like oh, they don't even make but, these anymore. <laughs> yeah. The current state of the resistance, I don't think they're in a position to throw anything away. But that's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> yeah. why R two and all of them are still around. Oh, like, yeah, hey, these uh, things still work, right? They're still using like 
old RF TVs instead of the new plasmas or whatever. Yeah, no, true. I got you, I got you, but you know. So, uh, how do you wrap up an hour long podcast like this? Say, well, it's if been like another hour of this, you should look up Kevin Smith's review <laughs> yeah. of the movie because I think he did an excellent job. I saw his actually, and I, and I, um, I mean, he jerked the movie off a little bit, but I, for the most part, I... I he even addresses that in there and yeah. says, no, I, I think Kevin's a legitimate Star Wars fan. I, I don't... Know. I know he is. You know how I know he is? He loved The Phantom Menace. Oh, you know what? I, love, I can't stand... I, I can't stand that he said that. I was like, I love seriously? That, I love that in his review he says, here's Mark Hamill wielding a lightsaber, which he hasn't done since Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. And yeah, I was like, funny. I was like, wow, he's right. It was like yeah. on screen, that's the last time he held a lightsaber. Oh. I mean, technically, yeah. It was yeah. like, Ooh. actually, it was a light Ooh. dildo, but who's not yeah. <laughs> split hairs here? Listen, pubic or other. Yeah. <laughs> he also was called Cockknocker, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna split hairs with you, dude. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah. so where do we go from here? What, what are we? Uh, how are we wrapping this up? Uh, well, I would just say anybody's final thought on the movie to I, anybody who hasn't seen it, or is anybody who I would hates say, it. I would say. Uh, Go watch it and formulate your own opinion. I, I, def- I definitely, I definitely think it's not the a type of movie that you should write off just because people say that it's not good. Right. You know, make, like, make your own opinion and 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 don't don't judge it on the way you think it should have went. Right. And and know that it has to evolve or it's gonna die. Yeah. No. Listen, this this movie definitely reflects somebody who was passionate about making a movie. Uh huh. But also understand. It's Disney coming in and doing some stuff that they had to do. So it's right. like sometimes when I turn out a piece of, of art for my like job or anything, uh-huh. I'm like I always present them with the best. It's like this is the best way to do this. I, I put a lot of work into this, and they're like, yeah, but we need to have this, this, yeah. and this in it, and I have to tweak my design to fit everything in and kind of make okay, something fine. nice. Here's the stupid way you want it. Yeah, exactly. Just saying. But like I'm still trying to yeah. get across what I originally thought should be that's how you kind of have to take this is like yes it is a movie that somebody really put a lot of thought into and they and they they carry the theme throughout the whole thing and but like there are there's little there's some mouse ears in there that you just yeah. kind of have to be like these scenes carry mouse ears on them yeah you know and, I mean? and like i said it's like there's gonna be another one next year or the one to like <laughs> next year and the year after, after that, if, you don't, coming if you don't out like the, this one then Fine, that's fine. Like you're entitled to your own opinion, but there's gonna be another there's one next year. Still so. gonna be. They, I'm guessing I, I, there's gonna be a solo podcast too, uh, guys. Uh, right? <laughs> oh my god. So, wh- <laughs> what do you think about that? By the way, like just real fast. Uh, what I, I like Ron Howard as a director. Sure. Um, I'm not looking at the other guy's pedigree. I don't know how they even got in there. I don't know mm-hmm. what happened. I, you know, they almost reshot the whole movie though. Right, and so and you know, and there's all that rumor going around the internet that Disney's written it off as a loss. And already yeah they're already saying wow. there's there's a rumor of course this is the internet guys and the internet gave us uh, trump and t and, and star wars hate <laughs> so the internet to me is like well you know if you treat that as the uh, final word on everything uh, be prepared for a lot of disappointment so uh-huh. i'm just gonna say let's wait and see right let's see what happens uh i I mean, I liked Apollo 13. I like a lot of Ron's work. I think he knows yeah. how to tell a story. I think so. I can't believe that he would go in there and just stick his dick in the mashed potatoes and go, oh, all of a sudden, I don't care about filmmaking. Right. No, you know? Right. Yeah. But it, I, I think I, I, in that respect, I think it's going to be another situation like this where there was, there was a strong theme. Ron's going to try to push something out where he's like, this is the story I want to tell, but you have to understand that there was some... There was a script in place. There was a script already in place, and he's just trying to do the best job that he and can. And that that guy can't act. The, but again, we don't know. The only thing I've ever seen... The guy that, that plays... Guy baby like, driver, no? No, well, the only thing I can think I saw that no, guy in was... it's not him? Oh, no. okay. I saw him in that uh, that last... What was the, the movie? Um, Hail Caesar. Okay. He was in that movie, and I don't remember thinking that he was an outstanding or horrible actor. I thought whatever he was doing on screen fit for what was going on. I wasn't doing handsprings, but I certainly wasn't going, cut, that guy can't act. Right. So, I don't know. Again, we're dealing with internet rumors. I think we ought to just get there and see But But, what but even with that, the casting for both of these movies and Rogue One have been great. Yeah, because I've, the actors they put in place have done their job at the very least have done their job if not done a fantastic performance yeah, well, so, yeah, so it's I'm all, giving I'm them wait, the benefit of the doubt for that's now. where I'm at I'm waiting yeah. to see I'm waiting yeah. to see on that 
All right. Well, I'd like to thank Kevin for coming on and joining us thank for you this guys for having me. special <laughs> special Last Jedi episode. Um, I think we had to have him on, right? Yeah. This, <laughs> I think this is the longest episode. I'm not sure, but I think this is the longest episode. If Kevin Smith can do it. We can do it. There you go. <laughs> okay. Why well, he has special? a much larger audience. <laughs> uh, but that does it for this week, guys. See you next week. See you next week, guys. Bye bye.